Welcome to a Legendarium special about life on board a Viking ship. In this episode, we will talk about how the Vikings built their longships, how they sailed them, and what it would have been like to be on board one of the ships which sailed from the Arctic to Southwest Asia. Seafaring became a central part of Scandinavian life because the fjords which dotted their coasts tended to be more easily traveled than their mountainous homeland. Shipbuilding dated back to at least 8000 BC in Denmark when hunter-gatherers made hollowed-out log canoes. These provided hunters with a mobile shooting platform that allowed them to take down elk and Arx. In time, these evolved into bulky animal skin boats that sailed along the coast before they became what we know today. Though Vikings also operated small fishing boats and ferries, they became famous for their long ships or long boats. They could be 60 to 80 feet across, and those transporting war parties crammed more than 120 men on board. Such a large crew would have 60 men serving as rowers at any given time should the wind slacken. It took 15 oak trees and 60 sheep involuntarily donating their wool to create a longship. Obviously, only a powerful chieftain could have commanded enough resources to build this ship. Viking shipwrights clinker-built their vessels, making them with overlapping planks of wood. They stuffed gaps between the planks with tar mixed with animal hair or moss. With no saws in northern Europe until the 13th century, Scandinavian craftsmen created planks by splitting tree trunks. They shaped them depending on where they would be used in the vessel. Craftsmen made floor planks deep and narrow towards the keel, but broad and flat towards the top, where sailors needed more flexibility. Shipwrights intended for these ships to be built anywhere. If a war party possessed wood, iron, and their wits, they could rebuild one from a wrecked ship or even from scratch. They made their sails from wool, often from a breed of sheep, which grew waterproof fleece. Most carved the prow with a dragon or serpent to frighten off evil sea spirits. Long, narrow, and flat, these longships proved fast, durable, and capable of navigating both choppy seas and shallow rivers. They also proved light enough to be carried over land. Their symmetrical design allowed them to swiftly reverse course without having to turn completely around. This became especially handy when navigating icy conditions. Of course, these advances did not make for a comfortable life for those on board. If you climbed on a Viking ship, the stench of tar used to preserve the wood and rigging would have been everywhere. Often refreshed throughout the voyage, the sticky tar found its way onto clothing, hair, and beards. Lard rubbed into the sails to make them windproof would not have smelled nice either. Throughout the voyage, the Vikings would be exposed to the elements, whether rain and sleet or blistering heat. The ships did not have cabins. At most, a cloak and hood would protect against the worst of the elements, and if the Vikings needed to go to the bathroom, they would simply pull down their trousers and go over the side. Throughout the journey, whether to sunny and splendorous Constantinople or the icy wastes of Greenland, Vikings spent about half their time rowing in stints ranging from 12 to 18 hours. Such long stretches of labor left even burly Vikings with aching shoulders and stiff backs, though they certainly slept well even in choppy seas. Smaller ships might have 13 benches, while the very largest had 34 rowing positions. A voyage undertaken to the colonies in Greenland or the timber camps of modern-day Canada would be no jolly holiday. Their blustery Arctic winds left icicles upon ropes, beards, and the ship herself. Given that the ship sought to deliver large cargoes or war parties anywhere within sailing range, it would have been cramped, cold, and smelly. Some of the rivers which took Viking longships deep into modern-day Russia often proved dangerous, with stretches of rapids becoming known as don't fall asleep. 
If they reached a point where ice or rapids blocked a river, the boats could be taken out of the water and rolled on logs beyond the obstacles. To grease the logs and protect them against catching fire while they rolled the ship, they smeared it with fish guts, which must not have smelled or felt very nice. Sometimes the Vikings hauled their vessels between rivers, which is why these boats tend to be smaller than most ocean-going ships. On long-distance voyages, the Vikings tried to island hop or come within sight of named landmarks. They also relied on the sun and stars, waves and wind, clouds and animals for navigation. Some even built stone cairns if they could not find landmarks that would aid in navigation. Despite the grueling routine of Viking sailors, their achievements are immense. The breadth of Viking explorations is remarkable, stretching from North America in the west to Southwest Asia in the east. The Viking Age is known for expansive exploration, advanced shipbuilding, and hardy seamanship, which made both both of the former possible. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.